And, uh, uh, welcome everyone. Thanks for joining us uh, this morning uh, for our Lunch and Learn webinar uh, with Coalition for Better Ads, Neil Thurman and Connie Walsh from Legacy, uh, a special guest that we're really excited to have with us. Uh, the topic is how top publishers generated more revenue with better ads experiences. Uh, we're going to cover a bunch. We're going to talk about Coalition for Better Ads, Admiral, and more. Um, as a matter of fact, let me take us through the agenda. So we'll start with some speaker intros in a minute. Uh, then Neil's going to take us through uh, kind of a refresher on Coalition for Better Ads, Better Ads Standard, uh, and what the Better Ads Experience Program is all about. Uh, Admiral, I'm going to give you just kind of a summary of what we do. We're the visitor relationship management company, and so what is VRM, and why is all of that relevant to what Better Ads is doing? Uh, then we're going to have uh, a bit of Q&A with, with Connie and Neil and myself. Then we're going to go through the pilot program, uh, both how we structured it uh, and the data from it. Uh, we got some really good data for everyone. Then we'll have some Q&A, uh, just talking about the results. Uh, and we'll have some parting thoughts. Uh, the coalition recently announced new mobile app standards uh, that Neil will talk us through. Uh, I got a really cool bonus stat that we will share with everyone. Uh, and then there's a special offer for attendees at the end. Uh, along the way, uh, Don, I do want to confirm, do we have questions open? Yes, uh, questions can be entered. And if we cannot get to them, then everyone will be followed up. Perfect. Yeah, so if you have questions, feel free to throw them uh, using the, the webinar tool uh, to ask the question. Uh, if we have time at the end, we'll take some of those. If not, we will do follow up with you uh, post webinar to get your questions answered. All right, but let's start with uh, some, some personal intros here. Uh, Neil, if you would, uh, give us a little background on yourself. Sure. Thanks. Uh, thanks for having me, Dan. Uh, very excited to, to be here. I'm as as the slide says. I'm director of the Coalition for Better Ads. Um, I've been the director for almost I think four four years now. Um, and before that, I have a pretty long history with with digital, um, starting in the late '90s uh, with one of the first digital agencies uh, out of Atlanta and. Uh, and then somehow having transitioned that into a, a, a side job at, in the publishing side of the business, uh, I started a blog um, about 17 years ago, 14 years, yeah, 17 years ago, um, focused on the English Premier League uh, and, you know, got to see that, you know, got to see digital advertising from a, how does it look to somebody who started up from scratch and then moved on, and, and my blog was was purchased by Vox Media uh, as part of SB Nation, um, and then got hired by NBC Universal and the the Roto World property uh, to to lead their coverage of the Premier League. So kind of saw it, you know, as a as an individual, uh, saw it as a uh, you know part of a startup that was looking to to build an ad based business. And then saw it as as part of you know one of the largest media companies in in the world. So um, you know have have seen that in addition to to helping uh, build and run run companies uh, all across that time. So it's uh, ho hopefully gives a little of my perspective on uh, on how I've experienced digital advertising uh, since it's since it started to be a thing 25 years ago. Super. Thank you, Neil. Mm -hmm. uh, and Connie, if you would, again, thank you so much for joining us. I'm, I'm sure the attendees are going to uh, really hang on your words as a publisher. So if you would uh, give us some of your background. Sure. Um, I'm the uh, uh, ad apps and programmatic person over at Legacy.com, which um, for those of you who don't know who we are, we're the largest uh, destination online for um, obituaries and death notices. We partner with English language newspapers uh, from around the world to power their digital um, obituary platform. And um, we are one of the, sometimes we are, I say that we are one of the largest sites you've never heard of. We've got uh, um, well over 40 million unique users each month. And, um, and uh, the company has been around for about 20 years. I have been at the company uh, myself uh for um 13 years and prior to that i worked at uh, chicago tribune and um and uh some niche uh, magazine publishers prior to that 
Super. Uh, again, thanks for joining us, Connie. Um, myself, I'm Dan Rua, CEO of Admiral, the visitor relationship management company. Uh, my background, I was a computer engineer by training, uh, then uh, got involved in startups and venture capital, did about three funds, uh, doing about 40 companies, all early stage software media companies. Uh, and then one of the last companies I backed was uh, a publisher in the music space called Groove Shark. Um, uh, did a mix of things there, including CRO, and got a feel for what was happening uh, both with Adblock and with a broader privacy and user empowerment wave that was bulldozing through the category, uh, which caused us to launch uh, Admiral. And so I'll tell you more about Admiral in a bit. Um, I do need to explain the shirt, which you know hopefully is you know helping wake people up this morning. Um, uh, Admiral is kind of known for our Hawaiian shirts. Uh, we have Hawaiian Shirt Fridays. Um, a lot of our customers uh, join us uh, in that. When we're at events, we're usually known for the Hawaiian shirts. And for years, we've been asked, what, you know, when are we going to have an Admiral Hawaiian shirt? Uh, and so we just got these hot off the presses, the, the first ever Admiral Hawaiian shirts. Uh, so I figured I'd uh, don it for everyone today. Uh, but on that, let's go ahead and, uh, Neil, if you could take us through a bit of a summary refresher on Coalition. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks. Um, so the, the Coalition for, for Better Ads is, is really uh, an industry response to the, the, the issue of, of ad blocking. I think about six years ago now, I may have the dates wrong because I wasn't, wasn't there at the founding, uh, the, the trade bodies that... Uh, that represent the various facets of the industry. So the IAB in representing publishers, the four A's uh, representing the ad agencies and the ANA representing a large marketer or well marketers overall um, got together and, and said, Hey, we all recognize that that ad blocking has become an issue. Consumers are looking at the social contract between themselves and the publishers who run ad supported properties and have you know have kind of said hey we don't like the direction this is going we don't think this is what we signed up for we see that there is an option to download an ad blocker and block all these ads and and we think that's our only only recourse uh the industry obviously this isn't it wasn't a healthy way to go forward it's not something that any one part of the industry can solve publishers alone can't solve it um agencies can't solve it by themselves marketers can't solve it by themselves so rather than uh, this initiative being part of one of those large um, large associations and trade bodies they decided to spin something out that was cross cross supply chain um, and so our our goal is to understand what consumers around the world think about ad experiences and focus on how to advise the industry on what experiences are so bad, so interruptive, so annoying um, that they are driving consumers to opt out of the ad supported uh, ecosystem. Uh, so we have pursued that goal. We've done research with, with hundreds of thousands of consumers around the world. We view the world, the digital world in, in what we call environments. So Desktop web has different ad experiences than mobile web, that has different experiences than short form video, than mobile apps, uh, et cetera. So we have gone across time, and Dan, if you want to uh, advance um, advance the slide, we, we have broken our, our work down into those environments and done detailed research. And I realize the, the chart there to the left uh, is, is a bit of an eye chart. It, it is really meant to represent all the ad experiences just on desktop web. That we that we went and measured with consumers, um, and you can see, uh, you know, maybe 80% of the way down the list, there's there's a red line, and and to the left of that line, there's a bunch of of experiences that fall what we call below the line, and those are the ones that consumers indicated to us were driving them to ad avoidance behavior. So, and you can see the 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 uh, the examples there. Uh, you know, pop-up ads, you know, thing, things that intuitively we all knew we hated as consumers. So pop-up ads and autoplay video with the sound defaulted to on and, um, you know, pre ads that, that block your, in, your experience before it even gets started. And then large sticky ads that, that block a significant portion of, of the viewing field uh, that you can't get rid of. Um, so if you think about those just intuitively, you would 
think, yeah, those are all pretty annoying. And if I had the opportunity to block them, I probably would. Um, so we we create created these these standards, and I won't go through as much detail on on the others, but uh, we can cycle through and, and look at the the standards for for mobile web. You can see there's a few more of them uh, there, uh, and that is owing to the fact that the mobile you know form factor is is smaller, and there's more around density and things like that. Short form video, there's less. Short form video, the ad experiences are are fairly um, you know, there, there isn't a lot of variety, so we tested less, and there are fewer that, that consumers found super annoying. Um, and then Dan alluded to the fact that we have recently rolled out uh, mobile mobile app experience or mobile app standards, and we'll we'll talk about that uh, towards towards the end. But just wanted to give you all a feel for for what we do. Um, in addition to that, we've we've created two programs that that people can can join up for so the better ads experience program is our program for publishers it it allows them to sign up uh with us it, it means that we will be reviewing their site more frequent sites more frequently uh, but it also gives the right to talk about the fact that you're part of this program and that you're voluntarily complying with the cba's standards and and we'll get into to why we think that's important as we talk about why we're, we're doing this pilot together uh, and then the other is for for companies that actually create and sell uh, ad experiences, and you know publishers I think want will, hopefully will want to know that experiences that they may buy from from outside firms are compliant with CBA standards, and so we have a have a program where we will review those uh, as well. Um, certainly want to to make sure I'm flagging uh, that the the Better Ads Experience program for publishers is free. Uh, it's not something we charge for. Uh, I know Legacy has been been part of our program for a long time, so hopefully, Connie, you uh, found it to be easy and uh, and and worthwhile. Um, and um, and so, anyway, that's kind of a, a quick wrap on on CBA. Um, ultimately, our our goal is to help repair the the relationship to understand how we can repair the the relationship as an industry with consumers around the digital ad experiences that we're providing to help support our our content um and so i think that leads logically into to kind of how how admiral is is thinking about their part in that in that same that same goal perfect uh thank you neil mm-hmm all right, uh, I'm going to give a similar sort of refresher on Admiral. Um, uh, many of you probably already know us, but some of you may not. Um, this slide here is our why slide, why we exist. Uh, the core business model of the internet, which nine out of 10 websites have been monetized by tracking people and shooting ads at them, that whole model is getting disrupted right now. Um, you know, each of these horsemen are various, you know, uh, fire drills, ad blockers a, a few years ago, and then the GDPR, privacy consent, and death of the cookie. They can each feel as independent fire drills, but they're really part of the same massive privacy and user empowerment wave that is reshaping uh, how the internet funds itself. And, and we're nowhere near done. It's going to keep happening over the next decade. Uh, and so, you know, because of these things, digital publishers are already losing billions of dollars, uh, and the worst is still to come. And we believe at Admiral that the future is all about first party consent based visitor relationships and revenue. And so instead of just hiding behind your site, tracking people and shooting ads at them, publishers are going to need to build one to one relationships with their visitors. They're going to have to build trust with their visitors. They're going to have to build stickiness with their visitors into the future. And that really requires a different sort of platform. It's not really an ad tech uh, discipline. It is more of a MarTech discipline. The way that you talk to people, the way that you uh, build relationships and, and hopefully convert them to long-term relationships, that's a marketing discipline and you need a marketing platform to do that. Uh, and so, so we built it uh, and it's called visitor relationship management. Just as you might think of a CRM and you know, customer relationship management, this is a CRM built specifically for media publishers called BRM. Uh, as it work, it is one tag. You, we stick it on your site for free. We will measure a mix of uh, revenue analytics for you, showing you the revenue potential of growing relationships with your visitors. 
And if you want us to grow revenue, our relationship manager kicks in uh, and we can do a ton of things. We've got multiple modules. Uh, we can do registration walls, email, account creation, login, subscriptions, donations, social growth. We can do ad block recovery, a couple different flavors. That's a lot of what we'll be talking about today, but it's just one narrow piece of BRM overall. And then we also offer privacy consent. So what we've done is we've taken all these pieces along the visitor journey, and instead of cobbling together five different vendors and five different tags to try to navigate this relationship, we've given you a single tag that can manage the entire journey for the visitor. And maybe the first time they show up, uh, you're talking about privacy consent. And maybe the next time you're getting an ad blocker off. And then next time is an email address and then a registration leads to identity and donations and other things. Um, our system has a journey built or built, uh, built into it uh, to help you create those visitor journeys uh, to navigate for all of your visitors. Uh, at the end of the day, it's one tag, one vendor, one consistent visitor experience instead of five different vendors trying to get a user's attention. Uh, if we do our job right, you end up maximizing ARPU over time, and that, that's the name of the game. Uh, I'm going to show you some visuals. Uh, oh, so, you know, who uses us? Thousands of publishers worldwide, top tier, mid, uh, long tail. It is built uh, easy enough for a self-serve uh, user, and it is built powerful enough for the largest brands in the world. Visually, this is what it looks like, right? So paid subscriptions, that's one of our modules. Uh, we power that for Mediaite. We take care of subscriptions for you from soup to nuts, no coding required, and we can launch subscriptions for you in a day. Uh, email and registration walls. These are getting very big of late, particularly with death of the cookie coming. Publishers are trying to figure out how do I create that first relationship point with that visitor. It's often an email address or a registration. You're gonna see a lot more of these, not just you know, asking for payment to read an article, but asking for maybe an email address or a registration to read an article that's growing across the industry. Uh, and then ad block recovery, which again is a subset of what we do, um, but it's pretty powerful. Um, uh, Viacom CBS uses us, we, we unlock new revenue for them, we unlock their full display, their full video, their full data stack um, for, uh, uh, and they're also doing some interesting stuff with their com score numbers and such. Uh, but why does, you know, what's the synergy here between Admiral VRM and Better Ads? Uh, and so this was really the, the genesis for, for Neil and I talking. And, you know, Admiral was an early member of the Coalition for Better Ads. And, you know, in talking with our publishers, we have a large network. Uh, and in the early days, you know, people were doing work to make sure that they're delivering great ad experiences. And yet visitors likely have no idea that all this work has gone on, that the coalition has done a bunch of research and good work, a bunch of publishers have done a bunch of work to improve ad experiences, and yet visitors likely have no idea, and in particular, ad blocking visitors, they didn't see the ad experience in the first place. Their blocker is on, so they didn't see your experience, and so if you improved on your experience, how in the world are they supposed to know? Uh, and so it led to this question of, maybe we need to let people know that we did the work right get some roi on the effort and so the question was would communicating a commitment to better ads increase re recovery rates for publishers uh, our hypothesis was yes if you're transparent with your visitors uh, but that's really the you know genesis question of this pilot um, and this partnership with coalition so off of that now you've got a summary of cba you've got a summary of admiral i do want to kind of shift into a little bit of panelist q a uh, and Connie, I'm actually going to step back for a second. And you did talk us through legacy, but maybe can you share a bit about maybe the size or structure of your kind of RevOps team uh, over there? Very small team. It's yeah. uh, basically uh, me, a programmatic uh, account manager, and uh, and a and an analyst. Okay. Yeah, and I ask that because we, we find the same thing across most publishers, right? It's a pretty tight-knit team, uh, don't have a lot of time to, you know, do a lot of extra work. Um, uh, and so, you know, when the CBA standard came into play, uh, you know, I remember in the early days, people are worrying about, okay, is this more work, more new work for me or what have you? Um, I'm curious, do you remember kind of how much extra work was this for you? Were you already in compliance? Were there a couple corner cases that you needed to deal with? 
Um, we were happily already in compliance. And so the, you know, as Neil said, the, uh, the uh, application process was relatively seamless. Um, we were happy that the standards were put into place because it did give us some guidelines that hadn't existed before. Um, and, uh, and, and, um, and, and we use them, you know, we, re we refer to them when we're doing product development. And remind me, Connie, are you, are you doing only programmatic or are you doing some direct as well? A little bit of a uh, direct sales, uh, uh, particularly in some, in, um, in more, uh, key uh cus you know key verticals and 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 custom programs um but in a in the case of display and video we're almost entirely programmatic yeah uh have you have you found one of the things i heard in the early days was that having standards like this was helpful to to aid pushback if 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 you know demand side we're, we're asking for units that were problematic or what have you um did you find that to be the case or any thoughts? Yeah, I think that, um, you know, we, we, because of the nature of our site being obituaries, we tend to have a more um, conservative uh, approach on what types of creative formats we would accept anyway. Um, and so, you know, the, so we were already typically turning down a lot of the, uh, the ad experiences that were, that are restricted by this program. Um, but I think where, where it is helpful again is, again, just setting those guardrails for the industry. And uh, hopefully you'd think that um, if there could be a critical mass of publishers participating, then the, uh, the uh, undesirable ad formats would would kind of you know erode out of the ecosystem on their own. Yeah, and and Neil, uh, you know, since you have you have some demand side and supply side, you know, in the overall coalition, mm -hmm. um, I, I'm, you know, any comments on that topic? Because it sounds like you, by setting up the standards, you're also helping kind of straighten up the demand side too. Yeah, I, I think it's it was helpful. You know, I, I think you have a situation where there are different motivations, right? You know, as as the publisher Connie and and her her, her colleagues on on the the supply side, you know, ultimately consumers associate them with the experience, right? It's less so, you know, a a company that 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 put a bad ad out there, and it's I think about. You know, when I go to the Washington Post in the morning, or when I go to ESPN or to wherever, you know, whatever my usual stops are on my digital journey, I I would be more upset at the publisher if there was a bad experience than 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 the the brand perhaps. Yeah. And and so I think it you know creating cross 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 supply chain standards and and having representation of of all all of the parts and having channels back to them. Uh, via the A and A and the four A's and and the IAB, um, you know, really helped get everybody aligned and, and understanding what the result was on the consumer and and just that you know, hey, if we drive people to ad blockers, it just makes them harder to to reach. Uh, and you know, that also, as it turned out, tended to be a younger, tech savvier, um, you know, kind of a, we'll call it a desirable demographic to get after. Uh, you know, we're driving them out of the digital ecosystem, and that wasn't good for for anybody. So I think trying to understand it at that level was was one of the things that I think the CBA was was able to help with. Nice. Uh, and Connie, I was wondering, on an ongoing basis, um, you know, what are some examples of what your team is having to do, you know, daily, monthly, quarterly, to just ensure quality ad experiences? Is this an ongoing conversation with your product team? Um, are you using any particular tools or vendors to just help you on, uh, you know, maintain ad quality? Um, we do use a, um, a, a, an ad quality vendor with on-page um, blocking yep. uh, capabilities so that um, any ads that um, are in violation of these yep. Um, restrictions or other quality controls that we have set um, are blocked on page and then um, you know our programmatic uh, man account manager uh, does regular checks with um, 
with all of our demand partners that our block lists are up to date and um, and being honored. And Super. many of the demand partners these days, uh, or more of them, I wish all of them did, but more of them now offer um, the ability to block some specific uh, ad creative types instead of having to block individual advertisers. Um, but I wish more demand partners did offer that. <laughs> yes. Uh, super. And then staying on the vendor topic for a second, um, you know, coming off of the, my Admiral summary, you know, any color you can share on, on what it's been like working with Admiral? Um, uh, what have you been using of our suite? Um, you're, you're not using everything. Uh, and how's the experience been? So we use uh, Admiral for, feels like at least two or three years now, if not longer. Um, we we use um, the Adblock Recovery product. Yep. So um, you uh, audiences who come to our site who have ad blockers enabled um, are prompted with the option to disable their ad blocker, in which case. Um, the full ad experience is restored, but it but we don't have a hard wall against that at all. And so, if a user opts to continue to use their ad blocker, then we um, defer down to using um, like acceptable ad exchange and other um, ad block compliant ad formats that Admiral reinjects into the page in a in an ad light way. Um, we're fortunate uh, having an uh, an older demographic predominantly on our site that our ad block rate is actually relatively low compared to what um, what other publishers maybe in in um, you know in the gaming communities or or you know younger um, uh, demographic sites uh, would have. Um, so uh, so the amount of revenue that we've been able to recover I'm, I'm i've been pleased with given our lower ad block rates in general uh super uh and anything in particular uh you know if you were describing admiral to a peer or what have you you know what's your takeaway on how admiral is to work with um yeah so we we've tested other um vendors in this space um prior to uh choosing Admiral and that we've even uh, concurrently tested um, Admiral alongside other vendors in this space and we did you know we did have the um, uh, I think this is the best fit for our site I like that we do have those um, levers and flexibility to give our um, audience a choice of, of what they want to do when they um, unblock ads and um, a lot of the other features that you were talking about earlier um, on the call that you offer, you know, are, are interesting to us too. And, you know, we will be exploring them in, um, in future months, especially as we head into the, uh, um, the third party deprecation window uh, that, that we've all been procrastinating about for the past couple of years. So, you know, it's, uh, it's good that there's that robust um, uh, suite of products that that existing customers can continue to explore yeah I, I know uh, when I talk with Brian from our customer love team we're pretty excited about just kind of the collaboration that we have with you Connie you in particular very collaborative uh, partner of ours and again talking about where the world is going with uh, third-party deprecation and coming back to first-party relationships so I really appreciate uh, the partnership to date um, let's go ahead and move on to the pilot uh, program and results. Uh, first off, we started with some surveys um, just to kind of get a feel. Uh, Admiral runs the, the world's largest real-time uh, ad blocker survey panel. Um, so uh, just as a heads up to anyone, if anyone has questions that they're curious about of ad blockers, throw them our way. We will throw them into the surveys. Uh, it's a real-time panel. We're always getting answers to things. Um, but we threw a few questions out there. So, you know, one of them, what's the primary reason for using an ad blocker? Uh, you know, plenty of reasons here, annoying ads, privacy, et cetera, but, but blocking annoying and intrusive ads, you know, was, was the top answer uh, in this uh, kind of flash survey that we did. Uh, we also asked, uh, you know, if a website's ad experience, um, 
is a major factor when they decide whether to allow ads, you know, to, to allow list that site or turn off their blocker. And, uh, you know, over 65% said that ad experience is, uh, you know, a, a definitely a factor in whether they're going to allow list you or not. Um, but again, that's, it's, it's a bit of a conundrum because it's an important factor for them. And yet they have no idea what the ad experience is because their blocker is on. Um, and so this is going to come back to the pilot. Uh, and then lastly, uh, you know, if there was some third party organization that could give some sort of certification or, or, or seal on uh, having better ad experiences, you know, what might you allow this, that site? Uh, and again, you know, about 54% said that uh, that would influence their decision whether to uh, whitelist the site. Uh, so that was all interesting data for us to then put it in practice and see if blockers actually do you know, what they claim in a survey. So, um, so we were lucky enough, uh, Connie and the legacy team uh, joined with us in, in CBA, also PGA Tour, uh, been a great partner, joined on this, and Advanced Local uh, joined us for this pilot run. And, uh, and here's what we did. So because Admiral, uh, our ad block module, has the ability to engage we detect more blockers than anyone else, and we can engage them with a message of, of your choosing. Um, Advanced Local, in this case, was already engaging blockers, but they weren't making reference to better ads. And so for the pilot, we said, okay, we're gonna create this CBA1 version that talks about better ads, but it talks about them in a secondary sort of way. So the core message is the standard message that Advanced Local uses, but just on the tail end of it, it says, you know, to enjoy our better ads experience. It in includes the better ads uh, certified logo. Uh, so we did that uh, and we did, we were able to do it in eight different geos, eight different properties. Uh, and we'll show you the results in a minute, in a minute. The baseline was an engage like this with no mention of CBA. And so when we show you the results, um, it will be, you know, engaging users with no mention, and no better ad seal versus engaging them with the better ad seal. So that's advanced local. Uh, here's an example for legacy. Uh, we actually did something a little more with legacy. So we had CBA one where uh, better ad seal is secondary. We also tried a CBA two where the better ads message was actually primary. And so it actually specifically said in the headline, help support better ad experiences. And it kind of talked about uh, improving ad experiences. Uh, and so we've got some data, uh, actually some interesting data um, on that that we'll talk about in a minute. Again, the baseline being no CBA mention. Uh, and then PGA Tour, same thing. Had a CBA one where CBA was secondary and a CBA two where CBA was primary. Uh, and here's the results, um, uh, which, are, which are pretty exciting. Uh, so first off, uh, these columns. So uh, CBA one is these first two columns. CBA two is the second two columns. Because Advanced Local didn't run a CBA two, then we're not showing data for that. Uh, and then under this, we have conversion rate and recovery rate. Conversion rate is saying for a given engage that someone sees, what is the conversion rate? What is the improvement on conversion rate on a specific engage? Recovery rate is more connected to the revenue that gets driven. It's not just whether they recover, it's the ongoing page views that they consume and therefore the revenue that is unlocked as a result of them converting. Uh, and so uh, that ultimately is where the rubber meets the road on revenue ROI on the Better Ads experience. So what we see here uh, is, is really some good numbers. So for on conversion rate, you know, Across all of these, you know, anywhere from, uh, let's see, Lehigh was uh, negligible change uh, up to uh, a 30% improvement for Staten Island. Overall, an average about 16% improvement on conversion rate. That's on a per engage basis. And again, because we have journeys, someone may see two or three engages over time, which leads to a recovery rate number, um, which leads to the revenue. Uh, and so in this case, you know, anywhere from 8% to 49% uh, 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 revenue improvement 
when the CBA seal was used and the reference to the better ads experience was used. And so we had an average of about a 28% improvement when the better ads uh, seal was used. Then for CBA two, which was putting the better ads uh, message a little more primary, uh, we have this data. And, and you know, as much as I would love for all of this data to be green, I, I really love that we have a case where it's not. And so it kind of caused me to kind of think about this and wonder, you know, in the legacy case, the CBA2 actually performed worse. Uh, PGA Tour uh, actually um, did about the same uh, on conversion rate, a little better on, uh, on recovery rate. Uh, but again, you know, average about 10% uh, conversion and better on recovery. Uh, so uh, on that, I'm going to stay here and kind of open this up a little bit. Um, first off, Neil, um, you know, what was your take when I when I shared this data with you? Uh, any any comments on the data? Yeah, I think it, it was uh, somewhat uh, expected. Um, I think the the thing that I've observed in in my time with the CBA is, you know, so much of this conversation uh, and and this extends beyond just you know user experience uh, on digital ads, but but the work that the industry is doing across the board with with improving how digital advertising happens is it is very much a b2b conversation we're getting together with our trade bodies and at at conferences and in webinars like this and we're talking about you know how we're working together as a supply chain to make things better and the people that probably care about it most the consumers we don't really spend a whole lot of time telling them about that and so i think what what we're seeing here is kind of the unlocking of that great well-kept secret that since, you know, and this is not an entirely CBA driven thing, there were a lot of excellent publishers. I think Colleen, or Connie rather mentioned, you know, they've probably already done most of this work. They're a big publisher, they have resources to do research, um, but they hadn't, you know, th that is not a traditional part of the communication between publisher and consumer to say, hey, we've improved the, this this advertising thing that you may not like all that much to begin with, we've made it better. Um, and I think you know now that it is a more interactive thing, as as digital has become the the predominant uh, you know method of advertising. Um, I, I think because it is more interactive, it gives us that opportunity to have the conversation with consumers and say we're doing better. We heard you, um, and we've eliminated pop up ads that you hated, and we've eliminated you know, autoplay video with the sound on um, and things like that. And hey, give us another try it is is kind of the in English version of how I interpret this. And 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 I think the, the results that we see here are kind of what's expected, which is people say, great, I'd love to give you another try. I think you, know, you did did some research and I think it corroborates other research I've seen, which even people who have ad blockers don't fundamentally object to the ad supported model, they kind of just objected to some of the how it was happening as as digital advertising kind of grew and matured. And now that we have updated them on how it's happening, uh, many of them are coming back and saying, oh, okay, I'm good with that. I would like legacy and, and advanced local and all these other properties that I, I, I go to, to, to stay healthy and to be there for me. And I don't want to pay a subscription for them. So I, I'm, I'm willing to support them, but, you know, and, and now that I know that it isn't quite the Wild West that it was at one time, I'm, I'm willing to dive back in. Yep. Um, I, I, was, uh, I was excited by the magnitude of improvement because, to be honest, the, the, the CBA brand is not a known brand to the average consumer. And so to get Lyft even before the brand has really been out there for consumers is great. You know, I think if we continue to do more of these and more uh, top tier sites are leveraging the, uh, the certification, I think rates can go up even higher um, because of the growing awareness that that's a, that's a trust brand that consumers would understand. Uh, Connie, uh, first question before we get to the results is just kind of the implementation how easy was this? Like, did you have to go to your developers and do something or any commentary on just how easy it was to give this a try? Uh, as I recall, the implementation was as simple as um, 
hosting the CBA Shield logo image on our domain and then Admiral took care of the rest and we were quite hands off in the beta in this beta process I I was open to testing this but I um I didn't feel like overly strongly about how how the how the logo was presented or what messaging was used so um you know I just sort of trusted Admiral to implement it yeah and then uh give me your thought on on the CBA2 ending up you know worse than yeah. than uh CBA1 uh, any thoughts on that yeah i've been thinking about this one too and i think if i think the number one takeaway is just it's an example of why every publisher needs to test for themselves um that that there can be a whole host of factors that um influence the the outcome of these types of tests on your own site so the the content the audience um the, the 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 browsers that they're more likely to be uh, using and consuming the content in. So there's a there's a whole host of factors. It I think it just shows that the messaging needs to be continually optimized and tests tested um, for any individual publisher. Um, but if I if I had to um, make a judgment call between maybe what resonated more with our users, the uh, the first. Uh, the first call to action uh, had stronger branding towards legacy and stronger messaging around um, memorialization than um, than the second one did. So um, probably the presence of the shield resonated with our users and made them feel like this was a trusted um, and approved uh, method of, of uh, restoring advertising to the site but uh, it needed to be coupled with the message around memorialization as well in order to, um, to really uh, have that, that impact that, that um, encouraged people to actually go and disable their ad blocker. Yeah, that was my guess as well. Um, just, you know, in, in our making recommendations to publishers, you know, the, the more the message can align with the mission of that site, align with the affinity of those users, uh, you're going to get better results, um, you know, as an interesting test, but I think putting the better ads experience front and center, you know, that's not why someone's showing up to to test out an ad experience. And so I, I, I think that's really what's going on there. Um, last thing I would share with everyone is that um, I didn't have enough data to, to really give it its own table, but with PGA, we were able to test a mix of different frequency settings of how often you might engage someone and and share the brand, and uh, and and by optimizing that, we actually got recovery rate improvements up to 65%. Uh, and so I think there's there's something here around the more someone might be exposed to the brand, the more they start to understand or, or give it more credence than maybe the first time they see it. Uh, and so uh, again, our, our our whole platform is built so you can change these settings without going to developers or anything and uh, so we can help publishers with that. Uh, as a time check, you know, we've got about 13 minutes left. Um, uh, we did, you know, kind of talk through some of these results. We did want to close out with a few uh, last bits. Um, Neil, if you would maybe take us through uh, the, the new mobile app standard that was just announced by the CBA. Yeah, so I, I think, because each each environment that I described earlier is has its own unique ad ecosystem, um, you know, we, and and therefore has to be researched at least a little bit differently. We've had to break up our work into these different environments: desktop web and mobile web, and etc. Um, consumers, I don't think think about it that way. They think about digital advertising as a thing that they either like or don't like, annoyed by, not annoyed by. Um, so when they're thinking about their digital journey and whether they think an ad blocker might be useful to them or you know whether they want to kind of opt out of the the uh, ad supported ecosystem if they have a chance um they they don't think about it in in those segments so our goal is to continue to to do work across the various uh environments and become more complete and hopefully eliminate or help 
help push the industry to eliminate those those uh, experiences that consumers find annoying and interruptive um, across the digital journey, even if ad blockers aren't really a thing in mobile or uh, you know in in some other other channels, it it doesn't help them. It it doesn't help the industry if consumers are angry and looking for a way out um, in in some part of the digital journey. So our our most recent uh, announcement was of our our mobile app standard. Uh, we announced it in. Uh, early early last month, um, and you can see uh, there's five or six, uh, I guess six experiences there at the bottom that are are part of the standard, but and they they share those same characteristics, you know, ads that are annoying and interruptive, and and ads ad experiences where the consumer has no control. So you know you can you can show them a five minute you know pre movie preview as an ad. And they'll be okay with it as long as they have some control to opt out after a few seconds. Um, whereas if if you give them 30 seconds, 31 seconds of unskippable, and they don't have that control, they start to get pretty aggravated pretty quickly. Um, so you know those those factors of annoying, interruptive, and and lack of control are the ones that we continue to find regardless of environment. Um, in terms of of the schedule, uh, like I said, we announced early last month and. When we announce a new standard, we understand that that the industry has lots of things going on, and that our standards, as much as I'd like to think they are, are not top of mind for everybody. Um, and 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 they nobody can stop on a dime and and change how they're you know architecting their experiences. Um, so we have a an industry transition period, uh, which means a minimum of four months between when we make an announcement and when it's, when we consider a standard to be live. Uh, and so that'll be early March when the uh, the app standard will will go into effect and be considered a, an active CBA standard. Perfect. Thank you. Yep. Um, I did want to uh, comment on one thing, as you mentioned. Uh, you know, for mobile apps, ad blocking isn't as big of an issue. Uh, one test I, I want to do with uh, the seal in the future is. Uh, including it even in subscription asks, right? Again, I think it's a statement of quality that I don't doubt could also have impacts on subscription opt-ins and, and other things like that um, that I'd like to you know, help yep. our publishers explore. Um, last couple slides. Uh, so number one, uh, we got a really cool bonus stat. As, as we were doing the number crunching on, on pilot results in parallel, um, you know, we're the only ones in the world who do the combo of both engagement-based ad block recovery and ad light or acceptable ads-based recovery. Uh, and so we wanted to do some comparison on the value of uh, uh, better ads from an RPM standpoint for publishers. And uh, so we were able to compare RPMs and the, the results were pretty staggering. Uh, on average during 2021, uh, each ad, blocked page view monetized with better ads instead of handed off for AA monetization yielded an RPM that was 400% higher than if you handed it off uh, for AA. Uh, and the monthly range was anywhere from two and a half X to 9.3 X. Uh, so it just, you know, it would have been great if it was 20% better, but it is, it is multiples better, which is, which is really neat. Um, we have measured separate from this pilot in other instances, uh, RPM differences as high as 14X. When you get that blocker off, right? You get the better ads experience, you get the full ad experience, you get the full data, um, much more valuable. Anyway, um, our data science team has a white paper on this topic um, that we're, we're game to share, you know, uh, for, uh, for anyone who wants access to that, just email whitepapers at getadmiral.com uh, for a confidential white paper on that. Uh, and then the parting thought here is, uh, you know, how can other publishers grow revenue with better ads? Uh, again, you've already done the work. You, you might as well get the revenue for it, right? Sometimes you do the work and it's uncertain whether there's a revenue gain or, or what, and, and why did I do all this work? Um, but this is an example of a case where you can prove direct revenue uh, as a result. So number one, register for better ad certification, um, which you can do uh, at that website. Uh, there, there's currently no cost for registering, as Neil confirmed. Uh, sign up for Ad Admiral Adblock Recovery at getadmiral.com slash sign up. 
Uh, we also have a special offer um, for, for participants in this demo. Um, for you know, new publishers who want to give this a try, if you email demo at getadmiral.com in 2021, uh, we'll actually give you a 30-day free test of trying this out with better ads to, to see if you can uh, drive new revenue as a result of the work that you've done for quality ad experiences. Uh, and then lastly, I would just share, you know, as much as, you know, we want you to use Admiral and uh, we think we do it better than anyone else. The, the real message here is whether you try Admiral or you build your own ad block engagement, you know, it behooves everyone to really promote the commitment to better ads and, and particularly the better ad seal. And I think what's going to play out here is that as more publishers leverage it, as more consumers are exposed to it, it will push up awareness and ultimately recovery rates uh, industry wide. And so there's a uh, you know there's a network effect that will come from more and more people touting their better ads experiences, uh, which will benefit the entire industry. Um, so on that note, um, this is the uh, end of our webinar. Let me see time check. We got maybe five minutes. Uh, Don, is there a, a question there you think we might want to tackle or uh, wrap and we'll send people answers afterwards? No, we'll, we'll take care of it afterwards. It's best to wrap up. Thanks. Okay. All right. So again, Neil and Connie, I, I can't thank you enough for joining the webinar uh, and for being a part of the, the pilot. It was a really good partnership. I look forward to taking the partnership even further. You know, this was just dipping our toe in the water with three publishers. Uh, if we can turn this into tens, hundreds, or thousands, I think it benefits everybody. So thank you again. Of course. Excellent. Thank you for having us. All right. Have a great day and uh, and and great holiday season. All right. Take care. Bye -bye. All right. Bye everyone.